So the body's constantly producing stem cells, but some people are producing them more and, and better quality than others. What are some of the things that contribute to poor stem cell production? I mean, it's, it's a big question because I don't think it's something that has been studied. Uh, so we, we know through a lot of studies and observations that we do have what we call good mobilizers and poor mobilizers. This means mobilization of stem cells out of the bone marrow into the blood circulation. And a poor mobilizer will have fewer stem cells in circulation. And then there's the age factor that comes into the picture. As we age, red marrow converts into fatty marrow, yellow marrow that does not make stem cells. So the number of stem cells decline as we age. But, but the factors that will make you make less stem cells, I don't think this has been studied. I'm actually working right now. We're starting a whole uh, investigative work with a, with a, with a scientist and an expert on stem cells, sorry, on bone marrow physiology, because this has not been studied. So to study the fact what can modify the rate of conversion of this red marrow into yellow marrow, is there a way to slow down that conversion? Is there a way even to reconvert bone marrow to make more red marrow, uh, we know that some elements that are going to reduce stem cell function uh, in the body are things like cigarette smoking, alcohol, stress. These are three things that will suppress stem cell function in the body. So that's pretty much like what is known right now in terms of what can be, what can prevent the role of stem cells in the body. Yeah, it's interesting. And so we know with chronic inflammatory conditions, your most chronic diseases people are dealing with related to chronic inflammation as at the root. How does that, how do stem cells play a role in that? Well, there's two, there's two very interesting angle to that question. Number one, something that is rarely talked about, and I would say not really known in the population, because we talk about stem cells, we talk about regeneration, but stem cells are extremely anti-inflammatory. So if we think of their natural role in the body, so when a stem cell, when you have an injury, that injury release a slew of inflammatory compounds. The reason for these inflammatory compounds to a large extent is to increase the flow of blood and lymph in that area to allow immune cells to better navigate around the injury, remove bacteria, but also to bring stem cells to that, to that area. Now you cannot repair as you have certainly seen uh, when you have an injury, when you repair, the inflammation goes away. You cannot repair while having inflammation. And that's why inflammation is always associated with a chronic problem that does not repair. And the thing is that in the background, when a stem cell penetrates into an injury, the first thing that a stem cell does is to shut down and reduce inflammation. So they are powerfully anti-inflammatory, but very locally at the site of an injury. So they are anti-inflammatory by nature. However, if you have a lot of these areas in the body that have chronic injuries. Sometimes they're small, like there's nothing that, that will really make your life miserable, but it's the thing where you get up in the morning and you have little pain here and there. So all these areas are called, as you probably know, damp, damage associated molecular pattern. There's all kinds of little areas with inflammation and they leak. And over time, they raise systemic inflammation. And what systemic inflammation does is that it blinds stem cells in their ability to clearly see where to go. So it's almost like a vicious cycle. You age, you have fewer stem cells in circulation, so you don't have enough stem cells to really repair all these small areas of injury. They leak, they create systemic inflammation, and now whatever stem cells you have in circulation have a harder time to find where they need to go uh, to, to, to repair. So, so that's, the, that's how stem cells are tied to inflammation, positively and negatively. Right. So when somebody has systemic inflammation, they are shutting down their ability to utilize these stem mm -hmm. cells, but also at the same time, stem cells have a anti-inflammatory benefit when they come out, they're able to suppress cytokine formation and, and help keep inflammation under control and balanced. Correct. So, so for example, what I'm working with, right, I've been working with this for, for, for quite some time, but if we have the ability to reduce systemic inflammation, even, te even temporary with uh, mm -hmm. things like curcumin or, or phycocyanin, mm -hmm. compounds that are known to suppress systemic inflammation. If you do this, you almost like reduce, reduce the noise in the bloodstream. So by increasing the signal to noise ratio, meaning now stem cells can better see where the signals are coming from. Now you allow stem mm -hmm. cells to find these areas, go and repair, 
And then you start to now reduce the, the, through, uh, through this feedback loop, reduce now the, 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 the continuation of that systemic inflammation. And by cutting this cycle, you can really boost repair. Mm, that's good. So that's one of the great benefits of utilizing anti-inflammatory compounds, like you mentioned, curcumin, I would imagine omega-3 fatty acids, things like that, that have been shown to mm -hmm. reduce inflammation. They're going to allow the stem cells to be able to function more effectively. Correct.